What's up guys, it is currently 3.53, and like the title of this video says, today I'm doing 500 pull-ups and running a marathon in the same workout. And to top it off, today's actually my birthday, so it's my birthday present to myself to see how tough I am, uh, see where I break, see what I can do, and see what I learned about myself. The reason I make, I'm making this video today is when I was 17, I first started hearing about people like David Goggins and Cameron Haynes. And I was really inspired by them and I was like, wow, how can they run so many miles and how can they do so many reps in the gym? Uh, it was just inspiring to me. But YouTube wasn't big when they were young, when they were learning how to become the types of guys that they are today. Uh, there was no video of Goggins doing 2,000 push-ups when I was 17. Um, and so because I'm the type of guy that can do some of these crazy things, that can you know, train to be able to run a marathon with the drop of a hat, train to myself to be able to do a 1,000 pull-ups in a workout, I figure I'll make a video documenting what I do, how I've learned how to get here, and just share the insights I've got along the way. So today for the 500 pull-ups, uh, I just always draw out a little 10 by 10 grid. And yeah, so I have 500 or 100 boxes and each box represents five pull-ups. So I'll be doing five pull-ups every minute on the minute for just a little over an hour and a half. There's nothing to it but to do it, should be good. And then after that, I'll run the marathon. For the marathon, I'm thinking I'll average about an 11 minute mile pace, uh, just running for 10 minutes, walking for three, just doing that for probably the close to five hours it's gonna take me. And uh, yeah, it should be a good time. Um, yeah, I'm really excited and I'll see y'all in there after the first set of 100 pull-ups. <laughs> also, this should go without saying, but it's currently 4.07 on a Monday morning. So the gym is entirely empty. There's six or seven other people in the gym right now. Uh, and in about two hours, it's gonna be packed. And, you know, it's probably gonna be a hundred people. So that's why I came to the gym early today to crank out these pull-ups because I don't want other people having to wait for me to get done because I'm gonna be here a while. So uh, let's get into it. All right, I have got the first hundred pull-ups done. See the first two rows are filled out. Um, it's going good. I figured just give you a, a tip for pacing. Um, for me, I'm doing five pull-ups every minute on the minute, but you could break up your sets a little bit easier. So, at the start of every minute, I do three reps and then get off the bar, rest until I hit the 30 seconds of the minute, and then I do another two reps. When I do this, you really just want to avoid the pumping feeling in your back. It's really like to keep doing pull-ups after pull-up after pull-up. Uh, when you're doing pull-ups for an hour and a half, you want to avoid that pump. And if you ever feel like you're starting to get the pump, just take a break, sit down for a second, get some water, I need to just give your body a chance to relax. And yeah, see you at the next 100. Another 20 minutes has gone by, so 200 pull-ups in the bank. Uh, I figured I'd show you my hands at this point. Um, honestly, not too crazy. I do have some pretty built calluses for this, because I have been doing pull-ups for a while. Um, I'm still feeling good. You just keep repping them out. It is very boring, but you just don't stop. That's it. All right, so I'm 300 pull-ups down now. I'm at a different location. I do neutral grip chin-ups here, so not full, full pull-ups, but I just needed to break from that. My biceps are starting to get a little crazy. Um, so this grip just helps me to do a bit more um, without like the worry of injury. Something else that helps a lot when your muscles start feeling tight like this is make sure you get enough water in. Um, just helps out a lot. This isn't me trying to be like an optimal fitness bro, but having water helps out a lot. So I'll let 200 to go, feel it good. Let's crank them out. All right. I am 400 pull-ups deep now. Uh, I've been going for about 80 minutes, so still been pretty good at keeping five every minute on the minute. I'm at a different spot now, so I can like mix up my grip every set on pull-ups. Biceps are really flared up right now, um, but I only got about another 20 minutes of pull-ups left, and I'm done. And then run a marathon, and that's it. So. Uh, 
All right, now it's time to do the marathon on the treadmill. Play works, I'm gonna run for 10 minutes, walk for three, uh, and this should give me like a four and a half hour marathon. Um, yeah, pretty boring, but nothing to but to do it. Um, yeah, let's get it done. All right, half marathon in the books. I've been at the gym for about three and a half hours now, so I guess uh, like four hours, so pretty good. I uh, got about another two hours left for the marathon. Feeling good still, my legs feel good, heart feels good, so let's keep on pumping it out. All right, so the pull-ups are done, the marathon's done. Uh, the marathon ended up taking me four hours, so I was planning just to do a run-walk strategy, but instead I ended up just running nine-minute miles for the whole time until I was done. Um, so that was good. I did run a bit slower at some sections, um, like running you no know, twelve-minute miles. Uh, but yeah, honestly, it wasn't too bad. I ran a three thirty-eight marathon a few weeks ago, so today was a bit slower. But I wasn't, you know, trying to set a PR or anything. It was just, uh, yeah, the birthday present to myself. Um, so I do want to just share some thoughts about how to train like this, the stuff that younger me wishes I knew back then, and how you can do the same. So for the pull-ups, um, what you really need to train is your body's ability to recover. So if you're watching this, you you probably heard of David Goggins before. I mentioned him earlier. He has a workout called Nickels and Dimes. So you do five pull-ups and 10 push-ups. That's a great workout to work on your body's ability to recover because you need your body to still be able to move during your rest periods and then do more pull-ups. Personally, I like Nickels and Dimes. I think a better version of it I found is to do a set of three pull-ups or five pull-ups or however many pull-ups you can do in a minute recovery time and then instead of just sitting there waiting just set up a lat pull down and maybe set it to like 20 pounds just try to do 20 or 30 reps of that uh while you're pulling it during your rest period and then go back and do your three three to four or five reps uh, by just moving throughout your rest period your back is going to start to become stronger and then week by week you can either just add more pull-ups into each set you can do more reps of the lat pull down in your rest period. You can add weight to the lat pull down in your rest period, or you can just shorten the rest period. So you have a lot of variables you can play with here in order to improve your body's ability to recover. When you train like this, you don't necessarily have to worry so much about overtraining, but it's just that your body doesn't have that recovery ability yet. So you should work on that. That's how, you know, if you follow Truett Haynes, how he's able to do these thousands of pull-ups in a, in a week and do 5,000 in a workout, his body's ability to recover is insane. Uh, similar deal with running and we should run some hard miles and run some slow miles and when we run the slow miles we work on our body's ability to recover so it's just setting your rest periods deciding what you're going to do during the rest periods that's going to enhance your body's ability to recover and that's how these insane athletes are training a lot of it does come down to the mental aspect though it's not just 100 percent physical or just 100 percent mental it's both you see like today once i was at six and a half miles like i have 20 more miles to go and this took me you know, a while <laughs> like I, I wasn't enjoying it uh, I didn't have any music on I was just trying to tough it out and personally I do enjoy running with that music but today I did the entire run on a treadmill I have a goal in the future to do 100 miles on a treadmill in less than 24 hours so I was treating today like a training run and I know on the 100 mile day I'm gonna get really bored so I need to practice being bored and that I can make a whole separate video on that that you know, being bored is a skill and how can you continue to work out but and at first, you know, the first quarter of the marathon says like, I don't want to do this anymore. So you have to find a way to trick yourself into continuing going. The way that I do it is, you know, I do an eight count breathing pattern. So for every four steps I breathe in, the next four steps I breathe out, my cadence is 176 steps per minute. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. By doing that, you're able to just keep your body consistent and you can run forever. And usually you'll fall into that meditative trance. But today it just wasn't happening after the first hour. And so what I ended up happening and doing was I was just saying the alphabet for each four breath count. So breathe in was A, B. And I would just do the alphabet over and over and over. And it took me two hours till I was like, all right, I can run. I, my brain turned off. I'm just, I'm just chilling now. Some guys, your brain never turns off. Some people, their brain turns off really quick. Uh, so you also have to find what works for you. Doing the alphabet works for me. Or just like spelling out people's names with the alphabet breathing pattern can work really well. Counting to 100 on your breathing pattern can work. Some guys say you have to stay present in the moment if you want to get that mental toughness. I think that's something that builds over time. Uh, just getting the run in, I think, is crucial. And then you'll have proof to yourself that you are tough. You know, you did a marathon today. People dream of doing marathons, and you can start doing them, you know, every week or every few days. 
And you're like, okay, I am tough. And then I think the, the belief builds itself based off the work that you've done and not the other way around. And that's another huge part of it. A lot of people say that doing 500 pull-ups just isn't feasible because they haven't watched videos or been around people that can do a thousand pull-ups in a workout. So a lot of it does come down to your expectations. I'm sure many of you have tried to run, you know, six sub minute, sub six minute mile or do hundred pull-ups or do a thousand push-ups in a day. And the first 800 push-ups, you're, you're feeling fine. But this final 200, you're like, oh, this is super hard. Personally, I think it's just because you know that you're nearing the end of your workout. And if you're doing 2000 push-ups in that day, you wouldn't really feel it until you're at 1800. So it's just a matter of thinking like, I'm gonna keep going. Like I know there's this limit, but you just keep pushing past it. This is something else that you can train. If you run a marathon and you're feeling good, like I am today, it's like, okay, I could run a 50K. So you could just brainwash yourself into running, doing the marathon sets, what you're gonna do, run the 50K just to prove to yourself that when you think you're done, you can always still give more. That's a crucial mindset for pull-ups, for working out, and I think just life in general. That when you think you're done, you always have a bit more. Goggins calls it the 40% rule. Honestly, I don't even think I've ever pushed myself to find out what 40% means for me. Uh, I need to start setting goals for things that I can't do so I can train to do things that I can't so I can find what my 40% actually is. But yeah, there's just a few thoughts around my brain today. And yeah, it is my birthday. You know, I've, had, I've been posting on Instagram today. Follow me, Peyton Thalman, on Instagram. People are saying like, why would you do this to yourself on your birthday? Like, why aren't you sleeping in? Why aren't you taking it easy? It's like, I'm not in like the hustle culture type, bro. Like I get, nobody really cares, but it's just a matter of becoming tough. And I don't want to put my foot on the brakes when I feel good enough to hit the gas. And if I'm feeling great, cause it's my birthday and I'm feeling happy, I might as well go hard when times are good. So that's my thought about training on your birthday. This is not saying like, oh, you have to train your best on your birthday. I mean, you can eat cake if you want. I'm not gonna be eating cake today just cause I just don't want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, train hard. Train hard when you can. Go hard when times are easy and go even harder when times are hard. Because we know that it's inevitably gonna get hard. So you might as well figure out how to be your best when you feel your worst. And final thing that I think can help you out if your well, young me wishes I had this mindset. But I do all these pull-ups, I do this marathon, and everybody's walking into the gym and I just look like a guy who just finished up a normal workout. You know, I, I've sweat harder on the stair step before. I've done more pull-ups in the day. Nobody cared then and nobody cares now, <laughs> all right? Like, nobody in that gym cares I just ran a marathon. Nobody cares that I've been, I got in the gym at 4 a.m. I didn't leave till 10. Nobody cares that I ran a 3.59 marathon after doing 500 pull-ups. Like, nobody really cares. Nobody cares I did a facet either. Like, nobody gives it, nobody cares about that. Um, and so just remember that, you do these things for you. You do it to become tough. Hitting the goals is fun and flexing it to your friends. Believe me, I get it, it's really fun. But we do tough things to become tough. And to become tougher, we need to continually do tougher things. So remember that. You do these things for you. If other people recognize it, cool. If they get inspired by it, awesome. But do these physical things for you. Sharpen your mind and chisel your body. So that's all I got for today. Today was my workout of doing 500 pull-ups in a marathon. And I might also get some more steps in later just to make it a 50K, just to say that I did it. Um, yeah, this wraps up my first video. If you like it, um, awesome. If you don't like it, cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, have a great day and keep getting after it.